Thank you, thank you, thank you once again for the applause. I actually wanted to do more fun stuff, but you're watching this uh, Monday morning, and I just am working on Sunday. So yeah, I don't have that much time. So, I'm going to make this video kind of quick because we had two assignments due today. And first of all, that the worksheets in your other packet, I mentioned to you before, I mentioned again, the worksheet IX over chapter 8, we're not going to do it all, so you can toss that. And then there was another one on Fatima, note worksheet, and the note worksheet in the new packet, so the one we're using, the other one's outdated, I totally changed it, so throw that away too. Now the new packets, I set up six new packets in the Dropbox. Again, if you want to copy it off of um, the internet on Power Teacher, it's right there. It was put there Sunday, and so you can copy it off there. Those packets can remain in there um, until the end of this week, actually. So, the one we're working on today is uh, Our Lady of Fatima Note Worksheet 1, the new one, the ones that came in the new packet or the one that you just printed off. Now it's different today, and I actually wanted to show you more detail, but it would just make the beginning way longer, is this is way brighter. It finally hit me that my projector was not making it very distinct letters. And I was messing around, how do I make this darker? And I said, well, wait a minute, maybe it's a projector. So it was a projector. I found out that my projector is 10 years old, and that it's normal for them to lose quality, which mine did. So you'll notice right away as we do this um, that it's very distinct, very much easier for you to read. Now because this is so much brighter, I got a spotlight right here on me, so if I step back to point over here, that I don't disappear in the black. That even though, and I want to put another light up here, which maybe, maybe by not this week, but next week, you actually see another light on me. Anyway, so I'm kind of proud of this because I did, it took a lot of work. And that reminds me, I have to pause. What I did is I even put this camera on manual, finally figured that one out. So it doesn't change focus, it stays the same. So all the letters would be much easier for you to read than it ever was before. So I'm a little slow at figuring it out, but I got it figured out. So. This is our new one. What I did was uh, I took my other projector down and I had another one we used for That Man Is You which was way brighter, way newer and that's what we're watching right now. So hopefully you'll notice the difference. You're also going to notice the difference big time because I already filmed the third video you're going to be watching I believe uh, Wednesday morning. Um, yeah, because it's Monday morning, Tuesday, Wednesday morning that one was the old technology, so you're going to see the difference there. Um, so anyway, without any further ado, because we have a lot to do and this introduction is already too long, is Our Lady of Fatima Note Worksheet 1, and I have a great devotion to Our Lady of Fatima. So this presentation I've actually given to a live audience before. So what happened in 1917? On uh, this May 13th, 1972, give you a hint, that's right. The first apparition of Fatima, that's number one. That's what this is all about, Fatima. So, we're going to give you all the most details you will get in your entire life, okay? And so, again, I'm going to try to talk fast, and you can pause it. So the first apparition of uh, Fatima, write this down. And remember, at any time you can pause, it's a lot clearer now. <coughs> remember, Mary appears to three children the 13th of each month. For how many months? Six months. Oh, the, number two, the date was right here, May 13th, 1917. Number three, what are the children's names? Here the three children are in a nice, clearer picture than the other one. Jacinta, Francisco, Lucia. And every time, if you guys were right here, at least four of you would raise your hand and remember their names. Hopefully after this, all of you. And I have their age too, is that correct? Yes. So then what you'll do is you'll put Jacinta, comma, 7, Francisco, comma, 8, Lucia, 10. Francisco changed age from the first one, which was May 13th, to the last one, which is October. 
So, but we're talking about the first apparition, he was eight during that time. But in 1916, a year earlier, what did they have an appearance of? Which is number four, and that is an angel. They actually had three appearances of an angel. And the first one, the angel gave his name. And what he called himself? The angel of peace. And he gave a second name, which three times. He also called himself the angel of Portugal, which we found out that every country has their own guardian angel. But this was the angel of peace. There's um, other pictures. There's their names if you didn't have it before. Uh, you can go back and pause it. We're going to keep going. And this is the three children zoomed in. And of course, as you can I see that I zoomed it in too, so you get a clearer look at them. Okay, first apparition of the angel. Here we go. Spring of 1916. And... Now, number five, remember I said that was three, but what does the angel look like? It begins, they see a light, very bright, coming closer to them. And when it was close, it looked as a young boy. And what does he say? The angel looks as a young boy, starts with a bright light, starts to slowly take the image of a young boy. And what does the young boy say? Do not be afraid, I am the angel of peace, pray with me. And we're not on number six yet. They all kneel, say together, My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love thee. I ask pardon of those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love thee. They said that three times, still did not answer it. He says, Pray thus, the hearts of Jesus and Mary are attentive to the voice of your supplications. Um, the summer of 2016, the angel suddenly appeared beside them when they were taking a noon siesta, where they were watching the sheep. The angel said, what are you doing? Pray, pray very much. The hearts of Jesus and Mary have designs of mercy on you. Offer prayers and sacrifices constantly to the Most High. So number six, what did the angel say when asked about how to make sacrifices? And she says, Make everything you can a sacrifice. So, that's the answer for number six. So I'm going to read it while you write that down. So the answer for six is make everything you can a sacrifice and offer to God as an act of reparation for the sins by which he is offended and in supplication for the conversion of sinners. You will thus draw down peace upon your country I am its angel guardian, the angel of Portugal. Above all, accept and bear with submission the sufferings which the Lord will send you. So number six, excuse me, number seven, said so what should be our intention for offering up sacrifices? Reparation for the sins. All right, forget, up, forget the reparation for sins. And so what does reparation for sins mean? If I'm doing something, like let's say on a Friday, I said, okay, this Friday, I'm not only going to give up meat, but I'm not going to eat any desserts today, and I'm going to offer it up in reparation to make up for my past sins, or make up for my students' sins. Okay, I'm offering up a sacrifice to make up for my own sins or somebody else's sins. Okay, it's kind of like if you did something bad to a really good friend, what can I do to make it up for you? You want to do reparation, okay? So make everything you can a sacrifice, and for what purpose? Reparation for sins. Okay, normally I would read this twice, but I'm not, so we're going to move on. Second apparition of angel. Oh, this is a summary. There's a statue there if you go to Fatima. What are you doing? Pray, pray a great deal to see heart, sacred hearts. Of Jesus and Mary have merciful designs concerning you. We're actually at number eight. Oh, what two hearts have merciful designs for the three children? Those are sure blanks because it's supposed to be Jesus and Mary. Right here. Jesus and Mary. Hopefully I'm zooming in on that. And but I think you know how to spell Jesus and Mary. And the third apparition, number nine, this is the one. If you remember first grade when you saw the video, this is the one that was there. There it is. I'm sorry, I have it over here too. Jesus and Mary. All right. 
Then the third angel apparition review. And what is the angel holding? A chalice with a hose dripping blood. Okay, in the cartoon you had to be really observant on that, but sure enough they kept it true. The angel was holding the host and it was dripping blood into the chalice. And uh, this is kind of a blurry picture, so it's not my projector. I just need to get a nicer one. Anyway, the, while you write this down, we're going to go to number 10. When the angel let go of the host and chalice, what happened to them? The angel let it go and they just floated in the air. So the chalice and host remain there suspended in air and the angel walks around and kneels down face to the ground and the children did the same and they prayed. So how do angels pray? That is number 11. They're kneeling down but face to the ground. Hard to put your face to the ground if you're not kneeling. Much easier. So number 11 is right here. Again, I'm going fast, so pause it. And it said, did the three children receive Holy Communion? That's a very good question. Uh, what did the angel do with the host? The answer is yes. The angel gave them their co communion for two of them as their first Holy Communion. So again, uh, pause this if you need it. Otherwise, pause. Okay, we're moving on. And then he gives them Holy Communion. First, he gave the host Lucia. That's who got the host. And that is... Um, Oh, who got the host number 12? Lucia did. And there it is, Lucia, right there. And the other question said, um, was this Jacinta Francisco's first Holy Communion? The precious blood to Jacinta and Francisco, so they gave them the chalice, and they drank the precious blood, and it was actually their first Holy Communion. This is what he said. Take and drink the body and blood of Jesus Christ, horribly outraged by ungrateful men. Repair their crimes and console your God. Very powerful words. And after communion, they said that same prayer again. And then, yes, this was Jacinta Francisco's first Holy Communion. So the second half of 12 is yes. And now we're flying. Oh. It would actually be Francisco's only Holy Communion. Uh, unless I'm wrong, but the research I did seemed to indicate it was the only first, the only communion he ever had was from an angel. Because he died very young. What month was the first apparition made? Do I ask that again? Uh, what were the children doing? No, I don't. This is 13. Taking care of sheep. They're shepherd children. They're taking care of the sheep, ba 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 ba, and that's where it was, May 13th. There was a flash of light, and the children thought that a storm was coming. They go, look, it's lightning, but there's not a cloud in the sky. But suddenly a lady appears. Actually, they were, they were shooing the sheep down the hill, and it was actually in the valley, where all of a sudden the lady appears, all dressed in white, and what kind of tree did she hover over? Right here, what kind of tree is that? It is called a hallmark tree. Hallmark tree. Uh, that's the kind of tree. Now, people asked when we were there, was there any remain to the tree? Even before October, there was nothing left to the tree. They figured everybody thought the tree was holy, so they pick up branches, and they, there was just nothing left of it. Um, that's where the lady appeared. So, uh, that's number 14. And what was our lady's first words? Don't be afraid, I will do you no harm. Don't be afraid, I will do you no harm. That's number 15. Doesn't take that long to write that because none of those are big words. So pause if you need. I think we're going on to the next one. Nope. And Lucia says, where are you from? And, oh, well, there's not on here. Number 15 is right here. We are now going to number 16. And 16 is here. Didn't know that. And uh, she said, I am from heaven. Where are you from? That's kind of a weird question Lucia asked. Her first words were, where are you from? 
And she says, I am from heaven. And Lucia says, what do you want of me? So number 16, now you're going to pause it. I know there's not another line after this. So pause it. All right, we're moving on. And what did Mary then say? Oh, I didn't have you write this, did I? No. I have come to ask you to come here for six months in succession on the 13th day. At this same hour, later on, I will tell you who I am and what I want. After I return here yet a seventh time. Lucia, Lucia is pretty smart. Uh, shall I go to heaven? Mary says, yes, you will. And uh, number, we're not there yet. Jacinta says, what about Jacinta? She will go also. And Francisco, he will go there too, but he first must say many rosaries. Number 17, who would first have to say many rosaries before we go to heaven? That's the boy, Francisco. We don't know why he has to say many rosaries, but every time we say a rosary, that means less purgatory time. So it doesn't mean he was a horrible sinner. It just might mean he was a little boy and he would have to pray many rosaries to make up for past sins, which I might add, he did. He, uh, when he knew that he was going to die young, so he used to skip school, go to church, and pray the rosary. So um, he did pray many rosaries, and he did go to heaven. But she asked about two girls that died. The first one, the Blessed Mother says, yes, she's in heaven. The second one, Amelia, she was about 18 or 20 years old, She'll be in purgatory until the end of the world. So, number 18, who would be in purgatory until the end of the world? Now, that was a sentence right there. So you can imagine that many people started praying for her um, and said prayers for her. Every one of those prayers shortened her time in purgatory. So she could be out of purgatory easily right now. Um, but that's where her sentence was when she died, which was only months before this took place. All right, uh, you could have paused that, so sorry about that. And what did, what did Mary ask of the three children? Are you willing to offer yourself to God and to bear all the sufferings? He wills to send you as an act of reparation for the sins by which he is offended and of supplication for the conversion of sinners. So, number 19, what did Mary ask them to offer up for the conversion of sinners? Sufferings, right here, sufferings, okay? So Mary asked them of that the first time. Are you willing to offer yourselves to God to bear all the sufferings he will send you? So what is she going to answer? She answers was, drum roll please, yes. I don't think I have a drum roll of special effects. I need to get one. She says, yes, we will. And that's number 20. And now we're on the other half of 20. Mary then, Mary then said, then you're going to have much to suffer, but the grace of God will comfort you. So... That's what happened. Mary said, yep, you accepted it. That's coming your way. But don't worry, the grace of God will comfort you. And that's the other half of number 20. Pause it if you need it. And what were they supposed to pray for every day? Or what were they supposed to pray? It's the rosary, which is number 21. 21. So pause it if you need it. And they ended up with the prayer. O most holy trinity, I adore thee, my God, my God, I love thee in the most blessed sacrament. All right, so number 22, who taught the children to pray? Oh, we're not even there. Um, that's not the same prayer, is it? Wait a minute. My God, my God, I love you in the most blessed sacrament. Oh, it is the same prayer, I'm sorry. So number 22, Mary taught them to say this prayer. So we say that after Holy Communion in uh, my two parishes. And when we're saying this, this is not made up by a Pope or some holy guy. It's made up, it's, it's given by Mary herself. So that's why we pray it. You could have paused it. Now the second apparition. And number 23, yes, we're not there yet. 
Mary appears about noon over the same tree. Lucia, what do you want of me? I wish you to come here on the 13th of the next month to pray the rosary every day to learn to read. Later I will tell you what I want. Uh, it's just an interesting request. I want you to learn to read. Not the other two, they're going to die. But, but uh, she was going to need to. But she asked to cure a sick person. Mary said he must repent first. I would like, I would like to ask you to take us to heaven. That's what she asked. Yes, I will. I will take Jacinta and Francisco soon, but you are to stay some time longer. Lucia would have to wait, in other words. So, number 23, we have all three names. Jacinta and Francisco are the two that will go soon, which is like within the next two, three years. Uh, yeah, within the next three years. Lucia, till she's 95, I believe is how old she was when she died, but Mary didn't say that. Mary just said she'd have to stay some time longer. Yeah, that was a while. So anyway, this is number 23. Pause it if you need it. And we're going to go to 24. Jesus wishes to make use of you to make me known and loved. He wants to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. So number 24, what devotion did Jesus want to establish in the world? Devotion to her Immaculate Heart. Okay, who's requesting this? It's Jesus. Jesus says, I want the world to have a devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So, if I have a devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I'm only what Jesus wanted. That's it, I'm just doing what Jesus wanted. Okay, this is the last thing you have to write down. We're going to go to the next slide, so pause it. Okay, we move on. We're still on the second apparition. She is sad because she has to wait. She wants to go to heaven. Mary, are you suffering a great deal? Don't lose heart. I will never forsake you. My immaculate heart will be your refuge in the way that will lead you to God. 25. When Lucia is sad, who will be her refuge? Her Immaculate Heart. Her Immaculate Heart will be the refuge. In other words, I can go to Mary's Immaculate Heart. She's going to console me. She's going to be there for me. Okay? Now, the very last one on this page. After she says that she opens her hand and light envelops them, Lucia wrote that they say that they felt immersed by in God's love when this light shines on them. So Mary does one of these. Light pours out and they can feel this immensity of the presence of God. And they just stay there. And, oh, sorry about that. Um... Oh, we're in the third apparition. When was the famous third apparition? That is July 13, 1917. That's the, that's the last one on this page. So everybody write that down. July 13, 1917. And then I want you to turn the page. If you don't have it, pause it. Now the first word, Lucia, Lucia says, I want you to do a miracle. Why did she say that? Because everybody, don't, they don't believe her. They go, we don't think you're seeing the Blessed Mother. Well, some people did, some people did not. So, they all knew that if Mary did a miracle, then everybody would believe the three children, which is absolutely true. So Lucia says, I want you to do a miracle so people will believe us. That's what she's trying to say. And Mary promises one in October. So she came in here, hey, I've given you a three, four months notice. There's going to be a miracle. And sacrifice yourself for sinners. And say many times, O oh Jesus, for love of you and for the conversion of sinners and reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So number 27, who are they supposed to offer themselves up for? Sinners. Sinners. Uh, next, she opened her hands and rays of light opened the earth in front of them. So, what could they, and what could they see very clearly? Okay, so 
I think the only one you have here is the date in sinners. And there the three children are. They're right there. Look, the grounds open up. So what are they looking at right there, which is the answer for number 28. What they're looking at in the ground here. Yes, grace, what is it? That is right. They're looking at hell. They can see hell. There's, again, it's kind of blurry. It's not me, it's the picture. Okay, uh, number uh, 28 is hell. Oh, we, sorry, these are turned around. What month would the miracle be in? October. So 29 is October. And now we're on number 30. And the answer uh, is on the next slide. I want to just read Lucia's own words, and then we're going to go to the answer, which is on the next slide. Here we go. Plunge in the fire with demons and souls, human form like transparent, burning embers, all blackened or burnished bronze, floating about in conflagration, now raised into the air by the flames that issued from within themselves, together with the great clouds of smoke, now falling back on every side like sparks in huge fires, without weight or equilibrium, amid shrieks and groans of pain and despair, which horrified us and made us tremble with fear. It must have been this sight which caused me to cry out as people say they heard me. The demons could be distinguished by their terrifying and repellent likeness to frightful and unknown animals, black and transparent like burning coals, terrified as if to plead for soccer, that means mercy. We looked up at Our Lady who said to us so kindly and so sadly, um, what'd she say? You have seen hell where the souls of poor sinners go. To save them, God wished to establish the world devotion to my immaculate heart. If what I say to you is done, many souls will be saved and there will be peace. The war is going to end. But if people do not cease offending God, a worse war will break out there during the pontificate of Pius the Eleventh. When you see that night, illumined by an unknown light, Know that this is the great sign given you by God that he is about to punish the world for its crimes by means of war, famine, and persecution of the church and of the Holy Father. So now we're taking the whole apparition apart. To prevent this, I shall come to ask for the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart and the communion of reparation on first Saturdays. Here we go. What three things do they see in hell? Demons, human souls, and fire. That is your answer for number 30. We're going to go fast. Pause it if you need it. And what did they hear? Shrieks and groans of pain and despair. That's number 31. So they didn't, they, they didn't talk in there about smell. But I think somewhere she said she could smell the sulfur like a volcano. And demons, human souls, and fire. And what did she hear? Shrieks, groans of pain, and despair. So will you write that down, I'm going on. And where do poor sinners go? Hell. Uh, that's number 33, hell. Oops, sorry. I didn't realize I only had these three. So you got, so pause if you need it. I already read it all. Pause it. I zoomed in on it for you. And now we're moving on. Now let's take it apart. Whose heart do we need to have a devotion to? Mary's. This is number 35. Remember she said God wishes that we have a devotion to Mary's heart. And who wishes to establish? Oh, here it is. God. And if we listen to Mary, what will be the result? Soul saved and peace. And what will happen if we don't listen to Mary? A worse war will happen. Number 37 is the last one. A worse war will happen. Okay, you got four right in a row. I don't know if there's a five. So if the case there isn't a five, you can pause. Nope, there is. And what do we call the war after World War I, which was known as the world, the war to end all wars? And uh, what do we call that worse war, number 38? WW2. We call that worse war, which it was, World War II. That is number 38. Now we're at 39. Uh, you could have paused that. 
And when will that worst war start? Under Pius XI. Under Pius XI. Number 40, what will Lucia see in the sky to know that the war is about to start? A mysterious light. Right there. Mysterious light. Number 40, pause it if you need it. Mysterious light. And when did she see the mysterious light? She actually saw it. Um, in January 25th, 1938, a strange glowing red light was in the sky and everyone in Europe saw it. And what did they say it was? So the newspapers and everything said there is this, you know, it happened in Europe, not in the United States, but the newspaper article in the United States did recognize that it happened. And they said it was the Aurora Borealis or Northern Lights. And, um, oh, you know, it would really be cool if, on YouTube, if I pulled up off YouTube and actually showed you what it looked like. Um, if I got time, I'll do that. But they're not a red glow. I read an article about a, a lady, she was a young girl at the time, and she said she was in Europe then, and everybody says there was this red glow, and they go, oh no, it's the Northern Lights. Then she went to Alaska and saw them, because that's not what I saw when I was in Europe. So they just, they couldn't say it was a mysterious light, which it was, they had to give it a name. But uh, this is the date, that's what it was, and this is the answer for number 42. I want you to pause this if you don't have that written down. And do the northern lights ever go that far down? No. Do I ask that? That's correct. 43 is no. Now I can tell you for sure. If you pause it, pause it, we're going on. See, that was actually from Scotland, the Aurora Borealis. Um, what was it? About two minutes, I think, all I showed you. Uh, it's kind of more of the highlights of it. But, because uh, it was in fast motion with the music, I kind of liked that. It was well done. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, it's weird because while I was talking to you, the camera shut off and I didn't know it. So, um, I'm actually starting over, at least from these uh, last three slides. And so you did get to see the Aurora Borealis, and I think it's pretty cool. You know, I haven't seen that many videos of it myself, but that wasn't what Lucia saw. It was what she described it, and everybody else described it as a red glow. So now we're on number 44, and these slides going very fast. This is the second time I'm doing it, so I hope I got it down. What is the purpose of this war? 
to punish mankind for his crimes. To punish mankind for his crimes. So hopefully everybody has that written down. And who allowed this war as a punishment? God did. God didn't cause the war. He just allowed it to happen. Um, but it does have the purpose for punishing mankind. Now we're at 46. And what three things will God allow exactly? Notice that it's only in bold print right to there. War, famine, and persecution of the church. Okay? So write these three things down. I'm going fast. Again, if you need to, you can pause it. Uh, number 47. To prevent this, what will she ask for? The consecration of Russia to her Immaculate Heart. Obviously, the answer I want you to have is underlined right there. Consecration of Russia. Um, actually, by the Pope, which we learn later on, had to be done by the Pope for it to be legit. So please write this down. And if a request is heeded, what will be the result? One word answer for number um, 48, and that is peace right there. Russia will be converted and there will be peace. So she's very specific on what she wanted, what the consequences would be. Finally, and if we, if we don't listen to her, what will the consequence be? Russia will spread her errors throughout the world, which is number 49, one word, Russia. So again, I want you to pause it if you need it, and we're going to move on, okay? Pause. Okay, we're moving on. And the next question, what did Our Lady ask for? The rosary. Basically, I reworded it on what prayer did she ask to pray for. Just one word, rosary. That's the only word I want you to put right there, rosary. And the next question, and to pray for the end of the war. She also asked everyone to pray for the conversion of what country? Russia. So pray for the conversion of Russia. And number 40, oh, I'm sorry. That isn't even on here, I don't think. Number 52. She said, pray for Russia, but there's only one problem. And when she's talking about this in July of 1917, Russia is a Christian nation. I mean, the vast majority of the population Probably 97, 98% is Christian in Russia. And it might be 99%. So why are we praying for Russia? Well, the prophecy is that Russia would spread her errors. And unless the Pope would consecrate, consecrate, consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart. And, uh, oh, there it is, number 53. To stop Russia, what should the Pope do? Consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart. Okay, that's a long one. So I want you to write that down. That's number 53. So pause it if you don't have it. The Pope needs to consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart. That is number 53. So are you write that down. We're going to pause. Pause. Okay, we move on. And what is the great evil Russia would spread? Jackson. That's right. It is communism. That is the evil Russia would, would spread. There's no question about that, that that's what he was talking about. And who would be martyred? The good. And the final one, who would suffer? Holy Father. That's number 55. All right, very good. I want this video to be short. I thank you guys very much. If you have all this filled out, the next thing you need to do is scan it in, send it to me, and you'll be up to date. And remember, this day has another extra assignment to it, which you could have done over the weekend, and that was the worksheet 2 over the handout. So if you haven't done that yet, do that now. These papers are due at 10.30 tonight. And so, hope you get those in right away. Otherwise, we will see you Tuesday morning. Unless you like staying up late, you can watch the next uh, YouTube video on the next section 
probably Tuesday evening. No, excuse me. Monday evening. This evening is when I'm going to upload it, so it's there for Tuesday. All right, got it. See you then. Oh, and by the way, thank you for the applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you.